What's going on guys, Bengal again here coming back at you with another video today doing a rebuild of the new look Buffalo Bills. Stefan Diggs has been traded from the Minnesota Vikings to, of course, the Buffalo Bills for a uh, first round pick. And there are some more details in there. I did an entire video covering the Stefan Diggs trade. If you want my advanced opinion on that, go ahead and check out that video on the channel. Subscribe if you're new and let's go ahead and jump right into things. A lot of questions I've been getting is, uh, am I streaming the draft though? Uh, yes, and it will be on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe for that if you want that first round coverage. And then second, third, and beyond will be on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash bangle. Make sure to follow me on there. Live reactions on Twitter all the time, twitter.com slash bangle designs. Again, linked to everything that you're going to need is in the description. Instagram, the outro song, all these different things. Look in the description and uh, hopefully follow me on all those platforms. And um, is that all I want to say? Pretty much is. Oh, yeah. Another question is, will I be rebuilding teams after the draft? And the answer is probably yes. So stay tuned and look forward to that, I suppose. And again, let's go ahead and hop right into things. Buffalo Bills, Stefan Diggs. Let's jump in. And this video is sponsored by Audible. Audible has thousands of titles, including audiobooks, podcasts, guided wellness programs, A-list comedy. Audible is the absolute place to go for all of your audiobook needs. Fantastic site. I use it personally. We all know I'm an NFL fan. Most of you are going to be big football fans as well, and Audible has no shortage of football content. A lot of different audiobooks. Currently, the one I'm listening to is Guts and Genius. It's about Bill Parcells, Joe Gibbs, uh, and Bill Walsh. Of course, you know, West Coast offense, Bill Parcells with bringing Super Bowls to my favorite team, the New York Giants, and even Joe Gibbs, who was instrumental in those Redskins championships during the 80s. Really, really interesting listen. I love the football stuff. Audible has no shortage of that. You want to listen to it and thousands of other titles, you're going to go ahead and text Bengal to 500-500 or visit audible.com slash Bengal. Once again, that is texting Bengal to 500-500. Easy on your phone. It takes a second. Or if you're on your computer, go to audible.com slash Bengal. Find out more. Once again, thank you to Audible for sponsoring the video. So first and foremost, let me talk about how I think a lot of people blew this trade out of proportion completely, saying it was terrible for the Bills. You know, the Vikings won the trade easily. Uh, they didn't because the Bills got one of the best receivers in football, definitely a top 10 guy for the price of a first round pick. He's only 25 years old. And, you know, sure, you can say things about, you know, him being a bit of a, uh, I don't want to say a drama queen or... A locker room problem but he's certainly a charismatic guy and that uh, has led to some issues in minnesota and he's definitely outspoken uh he's a real uh i don't even i, don't, I mean i don't know what you want to say i like him as a player uh he's fantastic it's tough to really speak to what he brings to a team in terms of uh personality and things like that because you don't know how his teammates react you only know what the media paints uh, and you see that picture, but he clearly didn't want to be in Minnesota anymore, and that was uh, well documented on social media and things like that. But Stefan Diggs is now a member of the Buffalo Bills, and even though I've complimented the Bills already, I'm going to do what I usually do, and that is upset Bills fans by being honest with them. I'm not sure he's in a better situation, because going from Kirk Cousins to Josh Allen is certainly a downgrade, and Josh Allen certainly has some potential, but to act like he's... Uh, this great quarterback already is ridiculous. He's a very, very raw passer still. Not very good. He's super inaccurate still. Still struggles with timing and touch consistently. Now, is he someone that can win you games with his tenacity, we'll say? You know, he's a great runner. Does all these things real well. But he's still super, super raw as a passer. And I think that that combination might not mesh so well if Allen continues to improve this is a different story but right now he is still raw and if you argue that you are biased and incorrect it's just the way it is the rest of this receiving core is not too good John Brown and Cole Beasley are okay but uh, I think at the end of the day you got to consider the fact that these guys are getting older John Brown is I think close to 30 if not over 29 and then Cole Beasley certainly is on the wrong side of 30 at a uh, 30 years old heading towards 31 and um i also have andre roberts who is a good special teamer really really underrated returner but he doesn't really offer much as a receiver got tj yeldon as a backup to the rookie beast that was devin singletary last year he was so so good offensive lines not too bad deon dawkins quentin spain mitch morse john feliciano ty and Secchi. 
they could improve at tackle but they did draft cody ford who has that tackle flexibility and in fact i'm gonna play him at right tackle i know they kicked him inside to guard but he has most of his experience playing right tackle at oklahoma so we're gonna go ahead and move him over to right tackle and start him over in Seki. and other than that i think we're probably pretty good mitch morse is fine Deion dawkins is young quentin spain's okay but uh, we'll probably have to improve at guard over the course of this thing and a tight end it's not so good either lee smith tyler croft dawson knox some young potential dawson knox could definitely develop into being a really good player in real life but in madden which is what we have to look at this he doesn't really offer us too much and lee smith certainly doesn't tyler croft doesn't we'll see how we can develop some of these guys micah hyde is a beast in the game Tredavious white is one of the best cornerbacks in football he's superstar x factor uh, josh norman has been added to the team although i would much prefer levi wallace uh, and uh, Teron Johnson over him even EJ Gaines probably than Josh Norman at this point defensive line's quite good but Jerry Hughes is older he really is like, he's a player that you don't expect to be as old as he is but I mean he's just I forget like him playing with the Colts almost it's so odd that's where he was drafted but uh he's approaching 32 years old Ed Oliver Star Latula who kind of fell off a cliff Trent Murphy's in here is not too bad uh, and then at linebacker, we have Tremaine Edmonds, who has a lot of potential. Matt Milano, who's very good. And then Mario Addison, who the team signed, who is their uh, Lorenzo Alexander replacement. AJ Klein, Tyler Matikiewicz in here as well. We definitely have to get better. I, I almost want to play Voshan Joseph quite a bit. He was this huge hit or miss player at Florida where he was either unbelievable or terrible. And who knows how he can develop in the league. A little bit undersized, but he's certainly a great athlete. And then Jordan Poyer kind of rounds out the secondary there on special teams. Also have Borges and Steven Hauschka, Hausch Money, at kicker spot. It's going to be interesting to see how this team develops. We're going to simulate to the midseason mark. And um, the first season just kind of going to be a blur. We're going to simulate to the draft. I'm going to load in my draft class. Finally, EA fixed the glitch where you couldn't download rosters. I received questions about this maybe about 20 or 30 times a day and that's not an exaggeration of people being like hey i can't download your roster why'd you take it down why'd you take down your draft class can you send me your draft class can you take can you send it to me like this was an issue completely on the side of ea i had nothing to do with and i couldn't fix it people had fixes and workarounds but they didn't work for me and you can't explain it to every single person but this is the draft class all loaded in ready to go and um now i will see you for the playoffs not even the playoffs, but for the offseason. That's where we're going to start from, pretty much. Oh, yeah, another question I've gotten is how do I load in this particular class? You can look in the file share. Just find a, a Madden 21 or an updated free agent uh, moves file. I, I mean, it's very easy. You just have to look a little bit. Just look a little bit. That's how you do it. It's not hard. But, of course, the people who are going to be asking that question have skipped around in the video already, and they didn't hear that. So we'll see it in the comments section, I'm sure. NFL draft time, of course, because I couldn't start from the wherever, the freaking offseason, I don't have the actual pick, but of course, this first round pick is actually not the Bills, because we've traded that for Stefan Diggs, so what we're going to do is go ahead and make a move, trading number 18 is what it ended up being, to the Vikings for, uh, we'll just do, I think, I think it was a fourth involved, hold up. All right, so basically these are the details of the trade. It's a first round pick, fifth this year, sixth this year, and it's a fourth next year, which uh, I guess we'll do that right after. I probably have to acquire uh, a seventh. So we're gonna do for a seventh this year. That trade, of course, is accepted. It looks like a terrible trade, but you know the Bills don't have these picks because they already traded them away. And then um, I guess we're gonna trade away just a random pick. I'll do a seventh uh, that we just got from the Vikings for uh no 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 hold it. yeah i'll trade it i'll trade the fourth for like their seventh uh because we're trading away that pick to 2021 fourth rounder and then we'll trade it for just a random seven next year so yeah it sucks to get rid of some value but bills do not have these picks so shouldn't have them right now we're gonna simulate to the second round see what's available all right so where do we actually want to go in the draft wide receiver still definitely a big big need could go offensive line um could even go tight end honestly but i think that linebacker or more specifically edge would probably be a better decision just kind of depends who's available i guess 
I kind of feel like Josh Uche is a perfect fit here. But I don't know that I want to take him here. I would almost prefer like Julian Aquara or Jonathan Grenard. Nick Coe is all right. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's go with Julian Aquara. 74 overall, number 24 in the class. We took him at number 50. He's got star or better at development. This is, this is just one that I could feel actually happening. He's going to start at left outside linebacker over Mario Addison for us with the eventual flexibility of moving down. I feel like we should change our defense to uh, something a little bit more um, basic, like just a base 4-3, something that like the Bengals are running that's usually pretty good. And then Donovan Peoples-Jones is kind of like a no-brainer in this spot. So let's get him. He'd be a nice compliment to Stefan Diggs. He just struggles with uh, being more of an athlete than an actual receiver at times, but uh, obviously is an incredible athlete. And he is now the newest member of the Buffalo Bills and a good uh, big target for Josh Allen to eventually throw to here. Jason Strobridge is going to be the next selection. 67 overall, ranked 126. We took him at 114. Not terrible value. Could eventually end up starting over Star Latulale, who is uh, not too good and regressing. But that's going to do it for the draft. So this is the team for the first season, which is what we're going to call it because this is really season one. Not too bad. Um, obviously, Stefan Diggs is going to look to play a huge factor in this team. I want Donovan Peoples-Jones to go off in the first year. That would be ideal. And then defensively, we're not too bad. Julian O'Quarr is going to see a lot of time, both as a starting outside linebacker and as our rush left end. And then uh, on defense, like... I'm going to play Strobridge over Latulale, but Harrison Phillips is going to play and be our second DT, Trent Murphy on the edge. Other than that, things are kind of staying the same as I set them up originally, and I will simulate to the midseason mark and see y'all there after spending some coach XP. 7-0 and oh at the midseason mark. Bill's playbook is OP. That's a fact. Absolute fact. Tredavious White is an impending free agent. Definitely going to be paramount to bring him back, as is Matt Milano. Trent Murphy, Deion Dawkins, TJ Yeldon, John Feliciano, EJ Gaines, EJ Klein, Corey Borges. Here's what we're going to do. Deion Dawkins, yes. Matt Milano, yes. Tredavious White, yet, yes. The rest, I don't know about just yet. Deion Dawkins wants more salary, but Matt Milano and Tredavious White are back in blue. And, uh... I don't know we're gonna upgrade our players julian O'Quara already fixing to be near an 80 at a 74 already so i'll take that with the skill points and then simulate to the playoffs which it seems like we're definitely gonna make at this point first round by did we go undefeated no 13 and 3 but that's i mean not a good second half of the season i was just just saying i mean we had three losses but three losses out of our what seven games what were he, 7-0? So, more than that, but <laughs> clearly. But, um, Josh Allen, pretty amazing season. 4,300 yards, 38 TDs, 9 picks. Devin Singletary was very good. Josh Allen was our a great second running back with 94 carries. Receiving, Stefan Diggs was okay. But really, can we stop? Disconnected controller, I hate that. Stefan Diggs was pretty good. John Brown was pretty good. Donovan Peoples-Jones had a good season, but Dawson Knox was unreal. 80 catches for 803 yards and 8 touchdowns. Wow. And even Tyler Croft had 5 touchdowns. We had so many receiving touchdowns. Defensively, Tremaine Edmonds was all over the field. We had a lot of turnovers. Trey White, 5 picks. How many sacks? 12 for Jerry Hughes, not too bad. 7.5 for the rookie Julian O'Quara, and a pick for him. 3 picks for Poyer, 2 for Micah Hyde. Not too bad. 3rd offense in football. And our defense was fifth. So, well, top five offense and defense. Josh Allen wins the MVP. We so rarely get anyone that wins the MVP. It's like once every, like, 20 rebuilds, I swear. AFC Offense Player of the Year is Josh Allen. He's going to be really, really good, especially if he gets a development increase to Superstar. Defensive Player of the Year, Zach Cunningham. No bills. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Tua Tungavailoa with the Patriots. Donovan Peoples-Jones at three of the Buffalo Bills, of course. And then defensive rookie of the year, Isaiah Simmons. Julian Okwara just misses at number two. And that was the only one we'd have in there. We got the Bengals in the divisional. We have upgraded the team. We might have a few more points left over for Tommy Sweeney and Saran Neal. 
but I wouldn't really anticipate them making a huge impact in this game or really for the duration of the rebuild for this team at any point. Who knows? You never know. Josh Allen up to an 86 overall. I'm sure that his uh, morale is playing an impact in that as it is. So really he's an 84. And maybe Stefan Diggs is helping Josh Allen become an MVP. Who knows what the 2020 NFL season will bring if that indeed ends up happening. Julian O'Quara is revealed to have star development. And we are looking pretty good. 83 offense, 85 defense is pretty good for first year. Let's see if we can beat the Bills here in the divisional to advance the AFC Conference Championship. And we can 27-21 in a very close game. If you guys are new here, of course, this is not a series focused on gameplay. Have series on that uh, in the past where it's more gameplay driven, but I'm not really a good player. I just like building the teams. So we just mainly simulate and build the teams and draft and sign players and make trades and things of that nature. But we'll see if we can win this rematch. Texans Bills, you guys remember that playoff game? This should be a fun one. Winner goes to the Super Bowl. And were we victorious? We were. It is Bills Cowboys. Was this a matchup in the 90s? It, it may have just, they may have just missed that. I don't actually know. No, yeah, there was a Super Bowl. Bills Cowboys Super Bowl XXVI in 1993. The Dallas Cowboys would win that. Ooh, this will be interesting. MVP was Troy Aikman in the coin toss, by the way. The juice, OJ Simpson. <laughs> OJ Simpson had the coin toss. The Cowboys absolutely murdered the Bills. 52 to 17. Hoping for no repeats here. Where was that game played? At the Rose Bowl. Okay, so in California, this one, complete other side of the states in Tampa, Florida. Can the Bills win it? Haven't had great luck in the Super Bowl, so we'll see. Close game so far here in the second half. 28-14, but we are making it real close. Under two minutes to play. We have three timeouts. We're on defense. Third and seven, essentially, for the game. I'm going to use Tremaine Edmonds. Looks like Zeke uh, in I form in the backfield. Let's go ahead and see if they run him the ball. And they do. That one is up the middle. Stop, Zeke. He's falling forward. Did he get the first down? Oh, my God. No bueno. All right. Still three timeouts. We need stops. I got to be on my A1 user game here. Just over a minute to play. We need the football back. Score does not win us the game. We need a touchdown. Now we got to start calling these. Run to the right. I'm trying to get all over that. That's a great tackle. But Zeke, again, falling forward for a yard or two. We got to focus up. Third and three. Three tight ends on the field. They're running the ball. They're setting up to go power. I'm going to get Mikey Hyde in here. Try to blow it up in the backfield. I'm just going to... I have to play the run. Run right. Oh, and I get caught up on a block. We got to play the football. Touchdown actually doesn't hurt. That was best case scenario because they could have won the game. They could have won the game there. So we have to uh, score immediately. And then get the football back with an onside score again. It was our best chance. If we sense we didn't make the tackle, clearly. All right, we have Stefan Diggs for a reason. We need to score, like, right now. So, hopefully Stefan Diggs gets open. He kind of was. The safety followed Peoples Jones. I should have thrown it up to Stefan Diggs. It would have been one-on-one -on -one with the safety. I just uh, didn't notice it. And also, I don't play the, this game. I never play Madden, so people say I suck. I'm like, I don't care. I don't play the game. Um, he gets sacked. Nothing was open. Gotta call a timeout. I mean, like, the game's over. I don't really know where to go with the ball. It's, uh, it's bad. Looks like Stefan Diggs is getting double. Look at the way the, sh the safety shaded over. Stepped up and threw it. He didn't do anything. All right. Yeah, I'm great at the game, clearly. That's on me. Fourth and 23. Game on the line. They're blitzing everybody. Stefan Diggs drops it. That is the game. Tough game. Of course, Jason Garrett and the Cowboys win the Super Bowl. Definitely how that worked out in real life. But uh, yeah, we were put in a tough spot trying to come back. And uh, we just couldn't make the easy stop. Zeke just kept falling forward. He is uh, pretty strong in the game. But this was only season one. We're going to come back for season two, season three, maybe even a season four. And see if we can get a Super Bowl. That was a, a very good first year. But 
you had to knew that you had to know that the Bills were not going to win in the Super Bowl. <laughs> you had to know. We got to re-sign some guys. Deion Dawkins is here. I'm going to give him a contract. Wanted a higher salary. Also extend the years on that. Playing up to an 81 overall, and he returns. He was someone that we needed to bring back just because he was you know young, developing, and someone that could be a staple on our team on our offensive line. It's just because we have consistency and we have we have ability there. Trent Williams is here. I mean that's someone that could be good. Marshawn Lattimore would be a good addition to our secondary. Keanu Neal's in here. We do need a safety with Jordan Poyer regressing, as well as uh, uh, Micah Hyde regressing. Age is a killer. I feel like we need a corner, though. I know we have, like, several okay corners. We need another star next to Jadavius White to lock down the other side of the field. Josh Allen up to superstar development. Dawson Knox up to star. Dawson Knox can be our starting tight end for the future. That's excellent. We do need help at offensive guard. Matt Milano's up to superstar. That usually happens. We need edge. We need we need edge badly. Julian Okwara could move down, so we do need off-the-ball linebacker in that case. I think we're going to move Okwara down now to a left end. He was so good in his role last season. Hopefully, he's going to be very good in this role. Not at left I said linebacker. At left end. Uh, he's going to be playing the same exact role, even if it's a different position. And we should be good. Okwara is at an 80 looks a little bit better so we we do need corner i could trade teron johnson or levi wallace if i wanted to i know we need safety we do have some money i just don't want to be super tied up and we have to extend josh allen 32 mil i think i can get one big signing maybe two Keanu neal rejected our contract i didn't really offer him a lot of money just because i felt like we'd be super tied up still the owner uh, only offer on shinobi awuzie now i have a strategy here actually what if we're going to coach xp and buy like cornerback free agency influence i guess db i've never really spent money on that before but i don't really need any of these training boosts already got all the ones i really want so i wonder if a woozie would sign now and maybe i'll even make an offer at marshawn Lattimore. the giants are the only team offering him like could i undersell what the giants are offering and still get him if i just took the money down because we have that db influence 83 i mean i can make that even less 72 72 and 74 i don't know how much the influence plays a part i know it's a, it's, it's a cheap coach package we got a woozie and we didn't get Marshawn Lattimore. i'm fine with that though we only really needed one corner and woozie is the one i wanted anyway we offered late on Marshawn Lattimore. i mean you just saw it just happened but a woozie is a tremendous improvement to our team going into the draft we need to focus on outside linebacker edge still def defensive tackle and offensive line obviously wide receivers a need but i feel like there just aren't ever that many good receivers in the draft so do i really want to waste a pick there and we'll pick up a uh the fifth year extension on josh allen he's going to be super expensive long term so that's a huge pickup on the fifth year and then tremaine edmonds also going to be doing uh his fifth year extension we'll worry about that a little bit later Ray Renee, who is this? Out of Clemson. He's got a cannon and he's really, really fast. Third rounder. Maybe there's a quarterback competition. You can't. Josh Allen's the best ever. That is true. Look at these, all these undrafted receivers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in a row. And there are more before and after. Sick. There are a bunch of really, really good players in this draft class. I'm trying to make some moves now for picks. Corners. Levi Wallace has got to go. Josh Norman is going to have no value, but he's got to go. Jordan Poirier I should move, but I don't really have anyone to replace him right now. Ooh, the Steelers have a pick at number five. Levi Wallace and Star Latulale, please. Give me your picks. Okay, there's something here, though. We could work something out. Let's be agreeable. I would just do it straight up. Levi Wallace and Star Latulale. Not quite. I might have to offer like a fifth. It's going to have to be a future third. A future third gets it done. I'm okay giving that up. We're obviously getting a ton of value. Levi Wallace, Star Latulale, and a future third for number five overall from the Steelers. And I'm definitely not done. Jerry Hughes, a three this year and a two next year gets me number seven overall from the Vikings. I feel like we're getting pretty good value, obviously, for some of these uh, 
some of these players, but we are giving up a lot of picks in the process. But we now pick at number five, we pick at number seven, and these are pretty clear and obvious trade down spots to hopefully get more picks in the first round. Just don't know how I'm gonna finagle that at the moment. We can't really get the value I want for trading down, so I'm just gonna keep the pick and um, just take whoever I want. Like some of these offensive linemen are so good. This corner is so good and I think it very easily plays safety for us. So I almost wanna take Javante McManus. But I, and I, I want to take Mike Hardwick out of Texas A&M. I mean, this guy is unbelievable. It's just so tough to narrow it down with what we currently have. I think the move is to take offensive line later. So I'm going to pass on these two offensive linemen, and I'm going to opt for Javante McManus to play safety for us. I'm drafting him. He's a 78 overall, number four in the class. He took him at number five, star or better development. 94 speed, 74 man, 79 zone. 68 press, 64 tackle. Hit power, 67. Block shed's a little low, but I mean, he looks like he could definitely play safety. So I'm happy about that. And I think the next pick at number seven should be the defensive tackle. I really think it should be. I know the tackle's really good. Tackle just isn't as big of a need. I know we could move Cody Ford back to guard. I just think Mike Hardwick is too good to let go. So he's going to be the draft pick here. 77 overall, drafted him at number 7. He's ranked at number 8. 6'3", 295, 90 strength, 79 block shed, 70 power move, 82 finesse moves, 78 speed. I feel like he's a really, really good player and um, definitely a worthwhile addition to the team. Now, I think that all of the tackles are going to be gone at 31, and I'm not even sure I would take one there anyway. If you check out my draft board, like I have a lot of tackles on here, but a lot of these guys are going to be available uh, later at least at least two of these guys Cassidy Wiley and Barry Forrest will be available for us probably at some point even Patrick Coffey so these are good players I don't want to necessarily draft a tackle at this point now some of these guys in the second round are players that I really really want Angel Kennard we no longer need because I took my safety he's good but he's not that good Jamarian Monk is probably the player I want next says he's a speed rusher type he's really really fast i think he can play off the ball with that pursuit and that tackle so i don't really think we need to play him there Dwayne mckenzie looks to be pretty good although i probably prefer monk so right now i'd say jamarian monk is close to the top of my board for players that we could actually draft but then those tackles are so good it's tough it really just depends who's available at 31 we'll be able to make the decision more clearly at this spot all right who's available all the tackles as predicted are gone trevor white is there jamarian monk is there patrick coffee's there do i prefer offensive line or do i prefer defense our offense performs so well and we can take guard later perhaps especially with the trade back up. I think Jamarian Monk is too good to pass up. I'm going to take him. 73 overall, ranked number 18. We took him at 31. He's got star, better development. 86 speed, 88 acceleration. He's really, really well-rounded, just cannot cover. But look at finesse, block shed, play rec, awareness, strength. All 73, 74, 75. Nice power moves. I mean, he can definitely play off the ball. I mean, that's a perfect, uh, like, you know, versatile front type player that we need someone that can play off the ball and rush the passer now the only question is do i make a move to trade back up for the guard i probably do 30 picks down i don't think he's gonna last so i'll probably try and trade up to i don't know 10 picks later than where we are now tyler croft a six and a future four Gets us number 41 from the Titans. We're going to use that to take the offensive guard and then either trade down or take another guard at 31 here in the second. So we now own this pick. Patrick Coffey is going to be our guy here. 76 overall, number 12 in the class. We took him at 41. Only normal development, but immediate starter on the offensive line. Strength is a little bit low, but has the run block, has the impact block, has the speed. Very good addition to our team. So we could take offensive line here in Barry Forrest. Or we could take a quarterback and potentially use him as a trade piece. I think I'm going to do that. Only normal development. Ah, 72 overall. Good backup QB. I, 
Could still use him as a trade piece. You never know. And if that guard is there at the end of the fifth round, that'd be awesome. We don't really need him so much at this point, but I would still like him to be available just to give us that option. I don't think he's going to be, but I, again, I don't really care too much. Yeah, he's gone, but that was expected. So I think our draft is over. All these players suck badly. We're trading a five, a seven, and a five next year for a three next year from the Cowboys, team that beat us in the Super Bowl. Just tried to trade these current picks to get picks next year since we gave up a lot of picks next year to make our team better now. Kind of took the Bill O'Brien approach there. We'll see how effective that is. I signed uh, Damien Williams. This uh, is our team. Again, Donovan Peoples-Jones is going to move up. We need to improve a wide receiver, but the performance has been pretty good overall from these guys. So it just wasn't an immediate need. And then our defense now looks like it has unbelievable potential. So I am super excited about, about what these guys could do. Actually, you know what we, might, what we might do? Is play Hardwick at defensive end. Like, I don't think he's poorly suited for the position. He's got decent speed. And just based on what we currently have at D-end, he's kind of our best option. So a little, bit of, a little bit of a surprise there. He'll probably still end up rushing the passer from the inside when Monk comes down or something like that. But that's what we're going to do. We held on to Teron Johnson. I think the first year McManus is going to play in the nickel and be our third corner. And then once Jordan Poyer... Actually, Jordan Poyer's got to get traded. Let's not be stupid. Jordan Poyer is going to be on the move. Javante McManus is going to be our starting strong safety. Just what has to happen. Jordan Poyer, the backup QB we drafted, uh, what Ray Rene or something like that, and a second round pick next year gets us a first from the Broncos. So very good return. We can definitely use that to fill some of the holes this team will eventually have. And we've got a good offense. Still looking to improve at wide receiver at this point. Uh, Peoples Jones, I feel like I've moved him up every single time. He's just like, nah, I'm going to be fourth. You're not. And things overall are looking good. McManus, again, are starting strong safety. Special teams is what it is. I need to sign a punter. And then Monk is going to be... Do I want him to be a rush end? No, you know, we'll keep him where he is. We'll keep him where he is. Teron Johnson's our slot corner. Donovan Peoples Jones is going to move up. Devin Singletary is still going to be our third down guy. And this is the team. Five and two at the midseason mark. A little bit worse than last year. Still on pace, of course, for the playoffs. It's going to be interesting to see how some of these guys end up doing. Dolphins, Patriots in hot contention for this spot. Micah Hyde will be a free agent. It's going to be imperative to bring him back. Teron Johnson as well. Quentin Spain probably going to go. Harrison Phillips. I don't know about Harrison Phillips. I just don't really see him having a need on this team. If he wants like less than three mil, I'm in. Yeah, so definitely. Three-year deal for him. We'll give him even more money. Make sure he stays. So Harrison Phillips re-signs. Teron Johnson's a great third corner to have. He's a little expensive, but not too bad. Again, I can't really use all this money up because Josh Allen and even Tremaine Edmonds next year are going to be super, super expensive. Micah Hyde is not too expensive. He's back for three years. We missed the playoffs. That's insane. We finished nine and seven. Are you kidding me, game? Ah, oh, Lord. Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. How do we miss the playoffs? Our offense dropped to 12th in the league. Josh Allen regressed big time, and our defense even performed worse. I wonder if the addition of a better backup running back had anything to do with that. It seems like the touches were unchanged, so I don't know. That That's probably not it. We need to put Stefan Diggs in the slot. We need to get better receivers. That's what it comes down to. We need better receivers. Tremaine Edmonds played pretty well. Didn't get a ton of pressure on the QB. Didn't force really any turnovers. And I think that's the biggest thing of why we didn't perform as well. Teddy Bridgewater wins MVP of the 6-9-1 Panthers. Josh Allen, nowhere to be found. However, he finishes in 7th in the Offensive Player of the Year for the AFC. Chase Young wins Defensive Player of the Year. Already a beast with the Patriots. I don't know how they got Tua and Chase Young. How did that happen? How did they get both of them? That makes no sense. How did they get both? I don't know. 
unless I'm crazy, I thought Tua won Offensive Rookie of the Year last year. I have no idea how that happened. Defensive Rookie of the Year, we get second and third and fifth, but didn't win it. Oh, brutal season for us, man. What happened? In free agency, we have Jair Alexander, J.J. Watt. Leighton Van Der Esch, DeForest Buckner. Ooh. J.J. Watt, I might be in on. Moved Hardwick back to defensive tackle. We need an edge. And also, McManus had superstar development unless he got that in the offseason. Which it doesn't appear that he did. So he, he had superstar dev. He was definitely the right pick for us. Hardwick only star. Monk only star. We need receivers and a guard. But other than that, I think we're balling. So we got James Washington and not J.J. Watt. So we got a good second receiver now. But again, not J.J. Watt, who I probably would have preferred. Because we still need edge. Now, I could move Monk down, although I don't really want to do that. Voshan Joseph actually wouldn't be terrible at outside linebacker. No one's offering on Leighton Van Der Esch. Might be able to steal him. But I'm not paying him close to what he wants. 56 total points. What if I gave him that offer and then bought the coach XP for uh, like linebacker acquisition. We'll see if that does anything. Who knows? Ooh, okay. Maybe so. Leighton Van Der Esch accepts the contract. That's interesting. And then Ed Oliver, we're going to pick up his fifth year option. Extend him. So we pick at number five and... I think pretty soon after that as well we have no we might only have one or two so fifth and 19 i haven't looked at the class at all yet but we need maybe edge maybe and i only say maybe because we can now with the addition of Leighton van der esch move uh one of our outside linebackers down probably gonna be monk even though i know matt milano is not too bad of an overall at defensive end what are his ratings now nah, it's gonna be it's gonna be monk who moves down if we don't take an edge rusher and other than that, our defense is quite good. Yeah, he's just going to be a really fast edge rusher. So Monk's going to move down to right end. I think our defense is pretty much done. Okay, that was actually straight up accepted. So we're getting a washed Julio, number 19 overall for Julio Jones. That's a receiver addition to this team, clearly. And then we're going to spend this number five overall pick on a guard. Now I'm in between two. It's Richard Heller and Lyle Lawrence. They both have very similar profiles. Heller's a bit faster. Lawrence is a bit slower, but a little bit stronger. Maybe a little bit better ability-wise. They seem similar. I'm going to go with Richard Heller, higher on the board. He is a 77 overall, number three in the draft. We took him at number five. Star or better development. He will be starting at left guard. Excellent addition to the team. We'll take a backup defensive tackle. Kirkland Bradford, number 72 in the draft. We took him at 88. Not too bad for value as that will be our last pick we spend. So this is the team for season number three. Very solid team. Offensive line is good. Receiving core is as good as it has been. Clearly is pretty solid. And then defensively, I think we're pretty awesome. Star, superstar development all over the place, and one superstar X Factor. This is how the specialist is going to look. Oliver Hardwick up the middle. Monk and Okwara off the edge. Leighton Van Der Esch is our sub linebacker. Teron Johnson is going to play the nickel. And uh, things look pretty good overall. Now, the only change I'm going to make to that is I'm going to put Stefan Diggs in the slot because it just seems to work better that way when you put your best receivers in the slot. We are 5-2 and two again. Josh Allen ready for an extension. This could be the final season, so it like, probably won't matter too much, but he is someone that I would like to bring back up to a 90 overall without morale. Seven-year deal. Josh Allen signs it. Tremaine Edmonds, we'd like to bring back as well. Man, we have a lot of free agents, actually. Oh, no. All right, Tremaine Edmonds signed. Devin Singletary wants more money. Uh, I'm cool on extending the rest of the go those guys for the time being. We are going to upgrade and simulate to the playoffs. This has to be a playoff team. Has to be. We didn't make the playoffs again. 6-10. and 10. How is that possible? The Patriots went 15-1. and 1. How is that possible? With this team, we win... Six games. We almost lost out. We barely beat the Jets. Look at the schedule. Loss, 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 loss. Win, loss, 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 loss. 
This game is going to make me insane. We've got a fantastic team. 91 overall, and we can't win a game. Jesus. Okay, so we re-signed everyone and then had to franchise tag Mitch Morris, Cody Ford, Mitch Morris, Dawson Knox, Devin Singletary, all re-sign. And of course, we had to franchise tag Morris because he declined and I can't lose him because we don't have the money. So just franchise tagged him. And we're going to go to the draft. Uh, this game is just frustrating me with the simulation engine. We made the Super Bowl with an 80 overall team, yet now with a 91 overall team, we win six games. It's a little bit frustrating because there's not really much more I can do. What's a position we could upgrade? De Julio's down to an 82. I, that's what I like. We, we picked up him and, and he was not even good. Micah Hyde is Superstar X Factor, but is down to an 82. Our defense is good. So we don't really need to focus anything on that side of the ball. And then offensively, we're also good. Like, it'd really just be a wide receiver who could draft a sick wide out. But I, I, I doubt that. So it might just be best player available for the pick. Just to see what we can do. All right, this is the guy. Rashard Davis out of Florida. Show me what you got. 76 overall, number eight in the class. Took him at number six. Star or better development. He's going to be playing a lot this year. He's, he's the guy. Take another backup linebacker here. Corin Lockley, not too bad. Number 52, we took him at number 70. Good value for the pick, but that is going to do it for the draft as we enter the final season. So this is the team for the final season. I mean, I traded a first for Julio, but he's down to 82. So I'm going to play the rookie over him because I think he can pass an 82 overall in his first year if he's targeted enough times. Defense looks tremendous. This is the way the specialist looks. Davis is going to be in the slot. I need this team to perform like win some games please i beg you i beg you <laughs> jonathan taylor's in free agency with only normal development did he regress in development is that even possible i swear he is higher than that all these running backs are here this is where we need to be first round by territory 13 and 3 finally finally won games only the eighth best offense John Gruden's on the Lions now. Second best defense, though. There we go. Josh Allen, good season. 4,000 yards, 30 TDs, 6 uh, interceptions. Very good. Devin Singletary was all right. Over 1,000 yards, but didn't even average 4 yards per carry. Receiving, Stefan Diggs was solid. Rashard Davis had a great rookie year. 822 yards and 12 touchdowns. Defensively, uh, th these guys played pretty well. 11 sacks for Jamarian Monk. 10.5 for Julian Okwara. Almost 10 for Ed Oliver. Four picks for Javante McManus. Love to see that. Yearly awards. Ezekiel Elliott wins MVP. Allen at three. AFC Offensive Player of the Year. Joe Burrow. Did he finish in second for MVP? He did. All right. AFC Offensive Player of the Year. Any other bills? Nope. Defensive Player of the Year. Miles Garrett. Leighton Van Der Esch at 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Rashard Davis. There we go. David Windsor at seven. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year, Matt Anderson. No bills. Also... Rashard Davis is going to have superstar development because he just got a new ability unlocked. 91 overall, again, we work back up to it from an 89. And Rashard Davis has... Ah, I was hoping for superstar X-Factor. But he has superstar, which is quite good. So he's the same overall as Julio. And we could even play him over James Washington in theory. I don't think we're going to do that, though. Offensive line looking solid. Defensively, obviously, we are looking solid. This has to be the team that, that wins games for us here down the stretch. We got the Browns one game away from Super Bowl glory if we beat them. And we didn't. We lost 21-7. to We got massacred. Uh, you could say the Browns shit on us. Great. We're going to simulate to the Super Bowl week just to see if there are any final upgrades uh, to development. So the team looks a little bit prettier. But it's Lions Chargers in the Super Bowl. Wild. This is your final team. Hope you guys enjoyed. This is the video. Let me know who I should rebuild next. Because I lo love doing these. Leighton Van Der Esch up to Superstar as well. Uh, if you didn't have it already. But that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.